Hey guys, welcome back to my TED Talk on potassium. Today we're going to talk about what happens if the potassium is greater than the number of Great Lakes in Canada. So, we got to consider some underlying causes. I'll show you how to treat in a second, but I feel this is important because we often ignore it. When you see high potassium and you have more than five seconds to spare, try to think of the underlying issue and if you can fix it or if you can sign it out to someone to fix it. So, the potassium can be high for multiple reasons. Usually it's kidney, drugs, cell breakdown, or acidosis, and insulin problems. Okay. So if your kidney has problems, CKD. If your adrenals have problems, so both the kidney and their hat can cause problems with the potassium level. Also make sure if you're in the if you're suspecting adrenal issues, look at the sodium because it's going to give you a big hint as to what's going on. Drugs to look out for, right? Potassium sparing diuretics, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, digoxin. If you can stop these, try your best to. Acidosis will cause potassium to shift out of cells and so will insulin deficiency. And then if cells just straight up pop, then the potassium is going to have no choice but to shift outside. So what happens when your potassium uh, shifts out of cells? Why is it dangerous? Uh, really, it's because it'll mess up your heart. And what are the key indicators that you'll see on the ECG? First, you're going to see T wave changes, then QRS changes, then AV blocks and sine waves. But really, you just have to start worrying when the potassium gets bigger than 6. Really, bigger than 7 is when most of the ECG changes will start to be apparent. But uh, 6 is a good cutoff just to be safe. So here, look at this. The T, it went from this cute little bump here to peaking like I did in high school. And then, you know, it gets bigger and bigger until we start just having random uh, sine wave activity going on here. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is you at potassium of 5.5, and then this is you at a potassium of 12. You're gonna be rushing to get that person dialyzed. Okay, treatments for high potassium. So. If potassium is greater than the 6, or Toronto, since I'm using the Great Lakes analogy, I think I'd stick with my Canadian theme. you got to do S-T-E. So, stabilize, temporize, eliminate. All three steps are required if potassium is greater than 6. If potassium is less than 6, let's say anywhere from 5 to 6, then you just do elimination. What are these steps? So stabilizing, you're going to stabilize the myocardium with calcium gluconate. This effect lasts a few minutes. Now, uh, it's one gram bolus given over 5 to 10 minutes, and you repeat every 5 minutes if the ECG changes persist. So <clears throat> usually you'll give this one uh, if you see the peak T waves or any kind of ECG changes. Okay. You can also give it kind of as a prophylaxis if you're really concerned. Temporize, so this is your insulin D50 cocktail. One amp is 50 mils. That's pretty easy to remember. And then D50, and this will last about four hours. So really, we talked about the causes, remember? And what's going to happen is the person's going to have a high potassium in the ED. They're going to give uh, insulin D50 or calcium gluconate, and then the potassium is going to come down and say, oh, look, they're fine. But what's going to happen when they leave? So an hour five, your potassium creeps back up and you're back where you started. So watch out for this. Make sure you uh, take a note if someone already gave insulin D50 because it's not going to last forever. Okay. And then if your patient's glucose is already high, you can skip the D50 part. You can just give them insulin. And then elimination. So this is what most people do most of the time. You can give k and furosemide. Uh, to eliminate it, an emergency dialysis if there is ECG changes. If you see ECG changes, that's an instant call to nephro for a consideration for emergency dialysis. So make sure to get them on board ASAP. And these are your two elimination drugs. Most of the time you're going to be using KXLate, that's sodium, zirconium, cyclosalate. And you're going to do 10 grams PO three times a day for 48 hours and 10 grams PO once a day for however long you want to continue the regimen. Okay, 
do the regimen for three days if the potassium high make sure you get BMPs every day or Q12 if you're really concerned and uh, watch that potassium go down this is gonna help you poop out potassium essentially Barosamide is a help you pee out potassium and this is great for people who are volume overloaded uh, especially good because it's you know you don't have to give such a big dose and you can give 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 mg per kg and if the person has AKI you can bump that up to 1 to 1.5 so it's going to help you pee out the potassium kick so it'll poop, you, poop it out for you and ensure they're on a low K diet in the diet order it's often missed it's kind of useless if they keep eating or consuming more potassium let's limit the, let's limit the intake and increase the output all right, I hope you enjoyed this little talk and I'll see you in the next video.